All right, Canon R8, here we go. This is what I'm talking about. This is what's going to elevate my photography and videography into the next level. Talking about these gears and complaining about them instead of actually using them for real life jobs. So let's dive into it. Wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Something negative first. Oh, Canon's been putting out too many cameras within the last couple of months. No, no. Oh, it's too much. It's just, it's a lot of. Ca no, it's it's not good. It's no, it's it's can't. There's too many cameras, man. Like, I, it's just not good. It's just, dude, it's just not good. You know. So let me see. This camera is supposed to be a replacement for the Canon R and RP. Who even uses those cameras in a professional setting? What's the point? No camera in 2023 should look like those. No ibis. What a joke. Wait, this this camera has no ibis. Oh no, the cripple hammer strikes again. No ibis, seriously, in 2023? Like, what's the point of this camera anymore? And what else is there? What else did the camera? Ah, oh, LPE17 batteries. Those tiny batteries. Why are you using those batteries? And why doesn't this have LPE6 and H? Why don't they use those batteries? No, don't give me that thing about these small bodies and stuff. Like, come on, you can't fit an LPE6 and H there. I don't care. Two cameras in 2023. Canon cameras. You should have LPE6 and H batteries. Shame on you, Canon. And a oh, single card slot. What? Who even wants to use a camera with a single card slot anymore? What's the point of having only one card slot? Like, what are you- Ah, oh, man. You're telling me that this camera is a good bang for your buck? It's $1,500. You're supposed to replace the Canon R and RP. Nobody buys those cameras. Nobody buys the Canon RP. Nobody uses the Canon RP. It doesn't have 4K. It only does it corrupt and there's no autofocus. Like, nobody buys a camera that does not have 4K. And its burst rate is so slow, no one uses it. What else did they cripple camera? Let's just see what else they have. 24 megapixels? Hmm. I mean, fair enough. It is a cheaper camera. And it's much better than the R6 with its stupid 20 megapixel camera, like, sensor. What's the point of having the 20 megapixel sensor? It's just soft. What's their videos like? Okay, good video specs. Ah, oh, no raw output? What's the point of this camera? How am I even going to take any videos with this if there's no raw output? Like, their C-Log 3, their C-Log, but what's the point? Like, I want RAW. I need RAW output. On a $1,500 camera, you should have RAW output. Wait, wait, wait. These specs look really familiar. Are these the specs on the R6 Mark II camera? Okay, so you're telling me that they put the R6 Mark II, everything they could have in that, they put it into this camera, and they didn't even bother to put IBIS in? And they didn't even bother to use LPE6 and H batteries? And also, like, they didn't even put a still card slot over there? Like, come on, man. Canon with its cripple hammer, man. It does not make a choose between spending less money or having better specs. Ah, uh, I mean, what's the point of this camera now? Like, no one's gonna buy this camera in 2023. No camera. I, I repeat, no camera should have, should be without ideas in 2023. What's the point? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that. I know that's a hundred percent gonna be reactions from some Canon spec bros, um, you know, after hearing this camera. But in all seriousness, welcome to the channel. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm Walter Fernandez. Thanks for dropping by. Uh, this is the Canon R8. Uh, it was rumored, I think, a while ago to be a full frame camera. That's a consumer camera. And I see that it's a replacement for the Canon EOS R and the RP. I mean, I, I think the role that it's going to take is the role of the RP being the portable, cheap, consumer level camera that can function professionally uh, as a backup camera as well. And, um, you know, it's just a priority over of size and weight over, um, you know, f certain functionalities. Still, still packing a punch, by the way. Uh, but price-wise, it is at the $1,500 category, so I think that's where it's the replacement of the EOS R. If I'm not mistaken, I think the Canon RP is one of the best-selling Canon mirrorless cameras anyways. So it, I think the R8 is actually a really good move by Canon to release this. Um, the fact that I'm seeing the specs of the R6 Mark II on this camera is insane. I really didn't hold back on any of these things. So I own the Canon RP as well as the Canon R6, the first one. Uh, I think I'm a fair person to judge uh, what this camera would feel like and what it would do. Just because the R6 and the R6 Mark II, they're different in some ways, but they're also pretty similar in a lot of them. I think it's just a slight spec upgrade from the first uh, Canon R6. And... Um, with the body of the Canon RP. I've talked about the Canon RP in a video I've made before. I'll link it up here if you want to watch it. Oh, sorry, it's too high here. Yeah, if you want to watch that. Um, generally, I think the RP body is it's okay. I, uh, I don't like how it balances with bigger lenses, especially someone like me who does not use RF lenses. I adapt all my lenses. I use uh, mainly EF lenses just because I use it I don't want to buy a separate lens for the R cameras that I use and the uh, EF mount film cameras that I use. So I tend to use a lot of like lenses with adapters. I don't think you'll have as much of an issue if you're not using adapters, if you're using native RF lenses, but I, I do not have them. So let's just go through some of these things right here. So let's start with the no IBIS thing. 
So Ibis has done me wonders throughout the years. Uh, after getting the Canon R6, I feel like I don't really want to go back to a camera without Ibis just because I like how convenient it is when I need a um, when I need a tripod kind of shot, but I, I don't have the time to get a tripod. I just want to handhold it and you know, it's it's it comes in clutch. It's great for that. Uh, I don't do many like vlogging kind of things. So the wobble has never been an issue for me. Uh, I usually shoot on a 35mm and an 85mm, so 35mm at the widest most of the time, so never been a victim of the wobble, so that's great. Um, but the fact that this doesn't have IBIS, I think if you use a lens with IS, you might be able to negate a lot of that issues. I, I see a lot of them talking about this, so that could be something. Uh, LPE 17 batteries, I've talked about this before, even though they die really quick, you can just grab a couple of them and just chuck it in your bag, they're really tiny and they're really light, so that's okay. And about the single card slot, I don't know, I haven't had a memory card fail on me before, but if you're really worried, I've heard uh, photographers like Sam Hurd say that um, when he was using the EOS R, the most possible a uh, situation where your SD card would have uh, corrupted or would have an issue is the point of entry. So if you keep taking it out and plugging it in, that's where you might have issues with corrupted files and stuff. So what he used to do was just transfer everything via USB-C, the USB-C output into the computer's USB-C input. And um, I know that's a really slow way to transfer everything, a slow way to work, but if you really want to ensure everything being safe and secure, I think that would be a good call to make. So yeah, but rest of this, these specs are insane. I'm not going to be talking about every single spec here because there's so many videos talking about the same thing. You don't really need someone to like read it out for you again. Uh, I'll link, I'll link someone's video. I'll link Jared Poland's video under here. Just just because I like the way he does his fro nose photo thing. I don't know, I'm really a big fan of that. <laughs> but yeah, I'll link his video down below if you want to check out the specs and stuff. He does a really he did he did a really well video about it. So the R8 as a whole, it seems like a really interesting camera, not just because of this camera itself, but the fact that it kind of shows you where Canon's heading in the future of this whole uh, consumer camera market that they're heading into. Um, it shows you how much they're willing to put if like the fact that they put so many Canon R6 Mark II uh, features into this camera, it's insane. I didn't expect them to put almost every single video spec there like head to head with the R6 Mark II. Well, granted you don't have IBIS and stuff, some people don't even like the IBIS and the Canon so some people actually prefer that. Um, but you know, the fact that they're willing to do this shows you where they're going with this. So here's the thing, Canon's kind of had this reputation for years as being the, can, the, the company that doesn't care about the consumers, they're doing these cripple hammer things and like, you know, all sorts of things which like, here's the thing you don't understand. A company like Canon has been on top for so long and no other company has been able to get them down. So that's where they get complacent and they get, you know, they, they say like, you know, I'm going to, I'm not going to allow you to have all these other specs in my top flagship camera because you're paying for this amount of money so you're going to get the specs that's available for this kind of money and if you want to spend less you get the lower specs from that and to me that kind of makes sense i don't know what you i don't know what you think about it it's it's as if like i go to a restaurant and i like buy a plate of fried rice and no the if i if i pay more i get a bigger plate with the same amount of rice but if i pay less i get a smaller plate with the same amount of rice that doesn't make sense from a business perspective does it and and i'm not here to kind of just like defend canon all the way and in no way i am i like apologizing for what they do or you know i'm not endorsing what they do i just i'm sharing my thoughts as a human being in this like uh in this day and age and uh, Here's the thing, with a company like Sony that comes along and gives you every single thing they have, they're a company that's trying to reach the top, they're a company that's trying to take the crown from Canon, and arguably they might already have. For them to do that, they've got to give you every single thing they can. They've got to give you all the specs, all the bells and whistles, every single thing to make you be like, okay, Sony might be a good system to jump to, you know, uh, buy their lenses and stuff so I can just be loyal to them next. 
the fact that they do this so well is it's great and you know doesn't but it doesn't take away from the fact that inevitably when sony reaches the top and stays there for a couple of years they're gonna do the same thing inevitably they're gonna be like okay i've got this camera here that's uh, you know six thousand dollars and then i have a three thousand dollar camera and there's no way i'm gonna give you the same specs as this six thousand dollar camera right here even though it's capable of it so i'm gonna take out some things to make you think that hey you know if you need it buy the six thousand dollar camera why are you buying the three thousand dollar camera that's gonna be the mindset for them in the future because they're not gonna be like making a six thousand dollar camera and then like no one buys it because why would you the three thousand dollar camera does the same thing it's just a smaller camera <laughs> and but also why i'm trying to say this is because like canon's willing to put all these things into these cameras shows that they're willing to you know not cripple hammer their stuff anymore because they're trying to get back to that top position or trying to get if, if they're still on the top which some people might argue they're trying to get further away from sony so sony doesn't catch up so what i pre what i see happening in the future is these uh, newer consumer cameras are going to have like better specs they're going to have you know canon's probably going to be putting everything they've got into these newer cameras which is for for us consumers this is great news this is just more value for whatever we're spending money on and that's that's great and knowing that after this release this is what the future kind of looks like i'm ready for it i'm all for it you know so yeah i'm pretty much just really excited for this camera and i don't think i'm gonna be picking the r8 up because i have the rp which i'm gonna sell soon and um i have the r6 and i i can tell you that I'm, i've been happy with the camera i don't really want to get another one i'm actually excited to see reviews of this canon r8 camera uh, after it's been in the field for a while just because i want to see functionally whether it's gonna be as good as the canon r6 mark ii or something most cameras are good nowadays like it's not super exciting anymore but it's also nice to see like some features that you know could kind of help with whatever you're doing at the time so you know as I've said, the R6 is a really good camera for me. I don't really see a need to upgrade anytime soon. But if there comes a feature which I feel like, oh, I really want this, then I might I might switch over, you know? That should be it for today. Like the video if you've liked the video. Uh, comment down below if you want to complain about how the R8 doesn't have the same specs as the R3 cameras. I'm looking at you, spec bros. Um, <laughs> Subscribe if you want to subscribe and watch more videos like these. Check out my other videos, by the way. I've got a lot of like cool videos. I think I think they're cool. And you know, oh, lastly, follow my Instagram if you want to. I'm gonna. It's it's linked in the description. All these things. And I will see you in the next video. That's all for today. Bye.